Run, river, run, run through the hills. Run, river, run to the sea. Run, river, run to your place beneath the sun. Run, river, run over me. Hi, this is Jan Lewis. Welcome to be my guest. Today we have from Rhode Island, right? North, Mis- North Smithfield, Rhode yes. Island. Bob Sherman. And Bob Sherman is an author I met at that huge um, Rhode Island Authors Expo, was it? Yes. Back in December. And I've talked about it before, but I have never been overwhelmed by overwhelmed. Not in, I loved the authors, but it was just so much. You, I couldn't possibly meet everybody. You couldn't do that, no. No, I even talked to one of the authors who was there, and she said she was overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. It was bumper to bumper table. 135 or more authors. And I thought the one up in um, Danversport was big. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little more spread out in the area and all uh-huh, like that. Yes. But my God, this was 135. It felt like 1,035. Yes, yes, it's large, right. And it was quite a drive. I mean, we drove well, driving yeah. down from Upton all the way down to, um, what? It, what's the town? It was in, was it in Cranston? It's in Cranston, yes. Off of Broad Street. on the Roads, what was it called? <laughs> Roads on the Patuxent. It's an old dance hall. It's been there forever. Yeah. When I was a kid, I actually went there and saw Benny Goodman play. You saw Benny Goodman? I saw Benny Goodman. That's right. That was toward the end of his career. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're a little young for that. My father was into the big bands mm-hmm. and all this. Yeah. Yeah. Benny Goodman? Benny Goodman, absolutely. It's called Rhodes, R-H-O-D-E-S. R-O-H, R-H-O-D-E-S, Rhodes. On the Patuxent. On the Patuxent, the Patuxent River. The Patuxent River. Yes. Rhodes was a famous scholar, right? Yes. I don't know... If this, I think this, I don't know who this Rhodes was, but there was, that was a popular name in Cranston. That was the name. Yes, yeah, yeah. Well, all right, well, he has brought us two books that he wrote, and one of them, The Train Station, is a mystery, okay? He likes to write all different types of things, okay? The Train Station, all right, you got that one. And the other one, they're fiction, this is fiction, but the other one, Border Crimes and Other Stories, this one are true stories, tales of irony and retribution. <laughs> now, we're going to have to talk about them one at a time. What do you sure. want to talk about first? Which was your first one? Well, I wrote them pretty much at the same time. The it same t- time? It took about five years. This was written <laughs> over a five-year period. Yeah. So yeah. Um, we'll do the train station first. Okay, very good. In, in, in many ways, that's, that's my favorite. Tell us about it. Train Station is about a 15-year-old girl, and I wrote it when my daughter was 15. Yeah. Now, that was uh, a few years ago, yeah. so it took about five or six years mm-hmm. before I finished it and, and got it published. But it's a story about a, a young girl, a 15-year-old girl who lives in Woonsocket, and I picked that location. Woonsocket. Woonsocket, right. And um, she just wants to go to school, be a normal kid, um, get a driver's license. She's already picked out a car. She's already begging her dad for the money. This is the car I want to get. Mm-hmm. And uh, she has to do a project in school So uh, for, the, for the end of the school year. And she has to write about someone. So her mother says, well, you know, you should go visit uh, this particular woman in a nursing home. And all right, she says, I'll do that. And yeah. so she goes and, and she visits this woman. Uh, who is an M- Emma Radcliffe, and she's not really related, um, but she's someone the family has known. And when she gets there, um, she meets not only this woman, but she also meets the woman's roommate. And lo and behold, the woman's roommate uh, is being visited by her nephew from England, because oh, yeah. she is from England. So now we have a teenage girl and a teenage boy oh, talking, yes. <laughs> and um, it turns out that the uh, the teenage boy's aunt, who was in the nursing home, b- brings them over aside and says, listen, I want you to do me a favor. Well, what? I want you to take me to visit the railroad station. He asks her. Yeah. Okay. The, the, yeah. Uh, the, uh, yeah. So both of them. You can do that. And they... Well, there is no railroad station here, so yeah. they go and look for it, and they find an abandoned railroad station. So they go back and they say, you know, there, there's just an abandoned station there. She said, that's all right. She said, I want you to just take me in the car some evening down there right after supper. Yeah. 
I just want to look at it. We'll come right back. Yeah. Uh, boy's name is Tommy. Tommy says, all right, and asks Caroline, Caroline, would you be willing to help me out? Well, sure. It's a little strange. So they take her out of the nursing home and they bring her down to the railroad station, which has been abandoned for 10 years. Yeah. And they... Is this a real station in, in Rhode Island? Yes, it is. Aha, uh -huh. okay. That is the picture of it on the book. Yes, there is. Okay. Yes. And, uh, and it has been abandoned. It was abandoned for quite some time. Yeah. So they go to the railroad station. Tommy says, I think we could get her inside. Now Caroline's freaking out. Mm. Well, all right, so they go inside and uh, all of a sudden they hear a train coming. Oh, yeah. <laughs> in the, in the world, an abandoned, an abandoned yeah. railroad station. train is coming. The train actually stops in front of the station, and the engineer gets down and walks over to the elderly woman and escorts her to the car. Yeah. And then the train continues on down the track. The ghost train. But what, is, and, what do the kids think of this? And, and it, well, it, it, let me just finish this. It turns out, of course, that um, the uh, engineer in the train is this woman's husband. Oh, okay. Who passed away 35 years ago. Oh, oh so he took her? He took her home. That is chapter one in the yes, book. That's a big one. <laughs> okay. And now, the, and now the adventure starts. So that's that's how it all began. And that's how it begins. And these, <laughs> and these two kids do manage to get to stay together too, don't they? They they are involved. Um, of course, they. Uh, Tommy has to go back to to, to England to go back to school. Mm -hmm. uh, Caroline um, has to go back to school also. Mm -hmm. And what happens is that the uh, the original aunt that Caroline had to visit, who, uh, they call her an aunt, they call her Aunt Emma, but she's just a friend of the family. Um, she goes to England, she comes back, they find her an apartment so she can live, and we mm -hmm. find out that she really never, never had to live in a nursing home. She was only there because of her friend. She was just taking care of her friend. Oh my who we goodness. learn later it saved her life during London. Boy, this keeps going and going. <laughs> yeah, be because... The the uh, the aunt Emma the Emma Radcliffe, she was uh, an older woman, but she's still mm -hmm. spry. She was in London, London, writing for a newspaper during the Blitz. So she said, "I'd like to go back there and just yeah. see." And uh, so I'm going to be leaving for a while, mm -hmm. and then it turns out she invites Caroline to go with her. Yeah. So they go uh, to London, and uh, they meet some friends and look around, and then. She said, I think I want to go to the War Museum. Yeah. A War Museum? A War okay. Museum right. and get some information. Yeah. Well, it turns out that, that Aunt, Aunt Emma really wants to find a plane that went down during the Battle of Britain in World War Where II. Where do you get these ideas? Do. Well, why would you want to do that? Well, let's just go find the plane. Yeah. So a lot of things happen in, in the book. Um, there's a spy ring. We find out yeah. that Caroline's yeah. grandfather yeah. was at, was in the foreign service, but he stayed over there during the war yeah. when everyone else left, mm -hmm. and um, unfortunately he was killed. And uh, we we need to find out who did that. Yeah. So they uncover that spy ring. Um, Bob, is this your first book, The Train Station? Yes. That was the first. When did you yeah. write this one? How many years ago? When did I write it? Yeah. Uh, was it what, how many years ago was it that it came out? It would out? have been my daughter's 21, and uh, it started when she was 15, so six years ago. Oh, okay, about six. Oh, yeah. you've got a millennial kid too. I got a 26 year old. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 So this, yeah. okay, so this was your very first one. That was the first one, yeah. That I've yeah. been working on for some time. All right, now. So. We have got the border crimes. Okay, border crimes. Other and other stories. <clears throat> these are tales of irony and retribution, and these are. Look at the cover of this. I mean, it doesn't look crime, but it, it's fantastic because it's so scenic. Yeah. All yeah. right, tell us about this one. Well, those are my photographs, and I de just to let you know, I designed the cover. Oh, you did? Okay. On, on both of the books. All right. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Um, with Border Crimes, uh, these are short stories that I had worked on over the years, 
and they were based on people that I know yeah. or have met. I went to uh, the University of West Virginia, so even though I'm a Rhode Islander, yeah. I spent time in West Virginia. What did you major in down there? I was in education. Okay. Yeah, I got my master's degree and then came back to Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. um, so I met a lot of interesting people, and I was involved in a lot of interesting situations. And um, Retribution, I love this. <laughs> well, yes, yes, uh, yeah. because every story uh, is set up I mean, there's something happens mm -hmm. it's not good um, but there's always a payback and um, people didn't mind telling their true story to you no well well some of it you have to understand that the people that I knew that I wrote about um, I would then create these characters, you know, manage these characters create these characters use the information I had from them yeah. and then put them in you know the historical situation and create create the ending of the story. And change their names, obviously. And, and change their name. Right, right. How many stories were there in here now? I think there are probably 16. I'm not 60 really. border crimes and other stories. We're talking with Bob Sherman. He's an really author from sure. Rhode Island. Uh, Which, was this more fun to write? Which was more fun this to was, write? This was uh, a lot of fun because I worked on it for a long time. Um, Is there, there's a list here, right? Well, it, yeah. yes. What They're all based in time. So, for yeah. example, we have the West Virginia stories. Okay, yeah. And there are four of those. Then there's, and those stop in 1947. That's why you left me a little note. These stories are best understood within the historical time period right. in which they right. took place. Right, yep. So, for example, one of the characters I use um, is a fellow that I met when I was in college who was a World War II vet. He was a paratrooper. Yeah. And um, he lost his teeth in one of the jumps. So, so he would uh, show people, he would take his false teeth out yeah. and show them. Um, so he, he's in the story. Was that the, Lox Fox, the last foxhole? The last foxhole, oh. let me tell you about the last 1961. foxhole. 1961, wow. The last foxhole is an absolutely true story, word for word, yeah. that happened to me. This was you? This was me, absolutely, from the beginning to the end, I didn't have to make anything up yeah. except the last sentence. Yeah. Only the last sentence. And it's a story about a woman who would conjure up the dead using a table. Yeah. You know, where you call, you put your hands on the table and the yeah. table would rock and they would ask questions. Yeah. And I, I rented a room in this house from a woman with a family who did this. And paranormal. It was very, para it. It was very paranormal. Um, it was funny because I didn't think anything about it at the time because she did it all the time. Yeah. And she would just invite you to come down. Oh, why don't you come down, Bob? We're going to talk to. And uh, she would conjure up. She conjured up an Indian when I was there, and she would talk to this Indian who had lived there, you know, 500 years ago. And um, you rented a room in this house. Yes. Where was it? Where this was, was it? This was in Fairmont, West Virginia. Okay. Uh, just, just south of West Virginia University. Mm -hmm. And back then, um, you, all, most of the college kids rented rooms or yeah. they rented houses. They didn't live on They didn't, they didn't live, live in a dorm there? Okay. They, they might have, but uh, I never did. Yeah. And uh, I lived in two or three different, two or three different homes, but everybody was renting their renting rooms. To was the she kids. doing the Ouija board too? She didn't have a Ouija board. No, mm -hmm. she was a very brilliant woman. Um, and a very strong Republican, I can remember, and it's in the story that... Um, she was a Republican, but she was dealing with the paranormal? Oh, yes. That doesn't add up. <laughs> I, I, well, I'll, I'll tell you, she, she, was a she was a phenomenal woman in many ways, and one of the things I remembered is that um, she got Time Magazine. Time Magazine back then was a very Republican magazine. Uh -huh. It's not anymore. Yeah, yeah. And it was, it was very clear when you'd read the, read the articles. Um, and she was on the uh, Republican National Committee. She would write letters to these people, and, and quite flamboyant. She sold. She was an antique dealer, but the the uh, antiques were in her home, so people would come into her home and they would buy the antiques. And one of the uh, scenes that's in the book that actually happened to me: I came home from class one day, came back, and I went into the living room to sit down, and the couch was gone. The what? The couch was gone. Oh, she sold it. She sold it. Right. 
and which I didn't know. I said, "Where's the, we know where's the couch?" And she said, "Oh, I just sold it." I She's, sold it. And she said, "And I have more, you know, in, in, uh, across the street." In, in How our often garage. did she do these like seances up there? Oh, she would. I don't know. Maybe every three, two or three weeks. She, didn't bother you then. I never thought a thing about it, which was kind of funny, because you would think you would, but I didn't know. You didn't care. Nah. Did you ever go down and join her with, with, when she was doing it? Oh yes, yeah, yeah. What do you think? You were open the, to the, it. Yeah. The story is about me at the table. So this particular true story is you. This, this is me. Yeah, yeah. Very interesting. Uh, very interesting. And the movie. Hanging Bridge, 1947. The so, Hanging the Hanging Bridge is uh, a story about a. Uh, a fellow who played cards. This is for real, professionally. too. Professionally, yeah. yeah. I met him, and he was an interesting character. Um, he uh, he would say he was an older fellow, but he was in school, um, probably on the GI Bill. But to make money, he would he would gamble, and he would just travel from town to town and, yeah. and gamble. And I wouldn't want to give too much away. Yeah. But it's a story of um, his neighbor, who uh, was a was a bootlegger. Yeah. And uh, how he sold, either he sold, you never really know. Um, but when he went to, he sold in Wheeling, West Virginia, yeah. um, which is a different, Wheeling, West Virginia is not really part of West Virginia um, because they're way up in the panhandle and um, they just never considered themselves part of West Virginia. They were right. kind of a wealthy town, as a, as a steel yeah. mill town. Anyway, uh, but the mafia was up. Mafia was very big down there. The mafia was the big mafia in West was Virginia. Very big down. Yes, it was. Yeah, in West huh. Virginia. I didn't know that. <laughs> and um, so they came down, and they um, b because because the card players uh, next door neighbor supposedly sold them some bad gin. They came down, put a rope around his neck, and threw him off the bridge right next to his house. And you knew him? I knew the card player. I didn't know. I thought the card player was the guy they killed. No, no, no. no. The card, the card player, um, who is the one who gets even um, for his his next door neighbor friend being thrown off off the bridge. So that's that part, the retribution. And the retribution, yes. He he does that in a card game uh, a year later. He got him. Yep, yep. But the. Uh, there's a lot about the sheriff in there, and and uh, they threw him off the bridge too, but he lived. We're talking um, with Bob but, Sherman, who is he is saying definitely not a one-trick pony with his books. <laughs> this, he is border crimes and other stories. True, okay. I, I would want to say <laughs> well, one thing that um, there is a story in there called um, "Self Improvement." Yeah, that um, North Carolina in North Carolina, two thousand and three, and that's that's the one that the uh, the woman when the woman read that they give me a thumbs up because it's a story about a woman who overcomes an abusive husband. There you go. And she does that in a very interesting way. Bob, <laughs> tell us, how can people get your books? Um, the easiest way is to just go on my website. They're all on Amazon, but the easiest way is to go onto my website, very easy, bobsherman.net. bobsherman.net. Uh, you can Google it, you can just type it in, and uh, all of my books will come up. So you also are a photographer? I'm a, well, Yes. Okay. Actually, I was a professional photographer years ago. Okay. I <laughs> but, know someone uh, you should talk with. <laughs> yeah, your cameraman right there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he was too. Yeah, so, yeah. did you do nature photography or anything? Time? I did nature. I love nature. And I did, I had my own dark room and I would develop and print. <laughs> but that's very expensive. Yes. And I couldn't afford it. So, a friend of mine said, Why don't you go work for our. Uh, I had a full time job. This was all yeah. part time. Yeah. You know, why don't you go make some money and. Uh, I, so I did. I ended up working for a studio doing wedding photography for a couple of years yeah. to make some money. Yeah. Um, How'd you like it? I didn't like it at all. I, well, you said an awful lot like someone I know. <laughs> he would prefer I, to get I, out with nature and I not with. I didn't like the, it at all because what would happen is you start at nine o'clock in the morning. You go to the bride's house. You take. Oh God. You had a hundred. We had a uh, hundred and seventy-eight pictures. We had to take one hundred and twenty-eight. Excuse me. Uh. These were cut in stone. You had to take these shots. That's number one. And then after mm -hmm. that, whatever you do. And we were working with colored film. Back then, you, you have know. a lot of patience at a, a lot of patience. So you start at the home. So you start at nine o'clock in the morning, and, oh. and you're not through until one o'clock in the morning. One o'clock the next morning. The reception. Well, the reception. Yeah, it always. They awful. fed you though, right? It was. Huh? They have to feed you. Sometimes though. they do. Sometimes they don't. Well, they can't expect you to go with nothing. I know, but I've been to 
weddings where that happened. Oh, dear God. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've talked about the train station. Okay, that is, that's, that's a fiction, kind of a mystery a little bit. Yeah, okay. yeah. Now. Carolyn yeah. makes a, uh, if we, I don't know how we're doing on a time, but Carolyn makes an interesting transition in that book, which. Um, in the train station. Yeah, yeah, and I don't know. Uh, I can read two paragraphs, sure, and, uh, ahead, and yeah. which describe it quite well. Mm -hmm. in, in the first, the first paragraph in the book, yep. um, which, by the way, never changed. I wrote that, which mm -hmm. is very unusual. I wrote that first, and it never really changed. The rest of the book changed a hundred times. So she's speaking. Last night, my life changed before my very eyes through an inconceivable visual and emotional experience that brought depth to my shallow soul. This is a 15-year-old girl. Yeah. Now. I learned that you do not need to travel the universe to experience its mysteries because under the right circumstances, the universe will travel through you, connecting unrelated parts into a heretofore unrecognizable whole. And knowing that it can happen and did happen opens my mind to the revelation that without this experience, I would have been an incomplete person a mere child-sized portion of my actual self. And for a 15-year-old girl, that would have been an overwhelmingly dreadful burden to bear. And you have a 21-year-old daughter. That's, that's how she started. Now, huh. if I go to the end of the book where she's finished all of her adventures, yeah. she's, in, she's in a train station mm -hmm. in 1940. Yeah. She's just experienced the London Blitz because she did go back in time. Mm -hmm. Now she's waiting in the train station to be brought back to her present time, okay. and she's all alone. Where's her boy? Where's the guy? He, he, He's he... off looking for the engineer. <laughs> okay. And she says, in my dreams, I am either a lone passenger on a train riding through a crowded station or alone on a platform watching a crowded train pass by. Either way, I am alone and disconnected from the fabric of life. Now I am alone in an empty station with no people and with the no trains, wondering where that fabric has gone. Maybe it doesn't exist. Maybe the fabric we want to become a part of is no more than an invention of our imagination, available for revision and even replacement if we knew how. So that's the insight that she developed. Bob, where have you been appearing? You haven't been appearing anywhere, like uh, giving presentations and book signings? I have not, no. Good Lord, you get out there, man. <laughs> have you got another book coming up? Um, what, no, uh, but I will be working on the train station. I will be doing the next, uh, I don't know, a follow-up on the train station. You're going to follow up on this one? I will follow up on the train station because it's a very interesting mystery in there, which was never explained. But if people aren't reading or aren't finding your yeah, book, no, how are they right. going to know? Right, well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, we got to get you out there. I'll do, I'll do the writing. <laughs> you got to get out there. There's no way. There's no way. How could, this, these are great books. I, especially my favorite is these yeah, all these true yeah. crimes. And what's your favorite in the border crimes? Which of all the ones? You know what changes? I I, I do love. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. Well, nineteen fifty nine border crimes. Well, all the two three things. First of all, I like I saw I like self improvement. I love that because yeah. I like the characters in that. Um, Probably, um, my next favorite would be. There's a lot. Yeah, yeah. It's it's hard to say. Well, you tell know, us about self improvement. I would say. Yeah. Tell us self improvement. Seventy five cents on the dollar. By the way, seventy five cents on the dollar is totally auto, totally autobiographical. Well, tell me, tell, tell so us about that, that one. That's me. Okay, tell us about that one before uh, we run out of time. Tell us about that one. That 75 cents on the dollar I wrote in when I was 75 years old. You're, you're not seven. What do you mean when you were? Yes, when I was 75 years old, I wrote that story. And I am now 79. This is true. <laughs> no way! Yes, I am. I thought maybe yeah. like 69? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you yeah. have a 21-year-old. I have a 21, yep. My second family. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so tell us about So that's that. autobiographical. Um, well, that's basically about um, two people that I knew quite well. Um, I played tennis with. Yeah. Um, two of them, by the way, have since passed away. Um, they were both in. They were both in the war. 
and they both had different experiences. Yeah. Some were up close and some were far away. So I contrasted life between people who become involved with life mm -hmm. and those who separate themselves from life mm -hmm. and stay away. Um, but there's also, there are a lot of people in there, a lot of characters in there. Um, one of them is a, uh, an alcoholic uh, uh, who lived out in Texas and his son had to come and pick him up and bring him back to Rhode Island to okay. uh, dry out and then put him in a nursing home. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of a nursing home in there. Yeah, uh, this, is the, this is a nursing home theme. You've yes, got yes. I had, a, I had a great opportunity, one of my very good friends who did pass away that I worked with in church uh, when we lived in Cranston, um, I, I, took, I took care of the money, I was a treasurer and, and she did some work. And so she went into a nursing home and I spent a lot of time visiting her. Okay, this um, is where that, yeah. So I have, I, yes, I can picture uh, the nursing homes and I, and I know what goes on. And of course my mother uh, was in a nursing home too before yeah, she passed so away. So was my mom. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a pretty good pretty good theme. Um, well, we've got to learn it, but, <laughs> but, but <laughs> okay. So the next book is going to be a follow up to the train I think station. We'll do a follow up to the train station. I'm going to have to go to England to really uh, you're going to go. That. Just, yeah, yeah. My wife says she'll she'll uh, she'll do that. <laughs> you're lucky, boy. That's really that's really cool. Okay, now Bob, before we we sign off, how yes. can they get a hold of your books, Border Crimes and the Train Station? Border Crimes and the Train Station. Again, just go to bobsherman.net. BombSherman.net. Also, you're going to leave a couple copies downstairs. Yes, right? I You're will. going to leave them down in the Upton Town Library, yep. and you can always go down there on the, at the author's wall and pick up a copy. Thank you, and let me know when the next, the sequel is... Uh, I think that'll be two or three years away. Two or three years? Really? <laughs> yeah, I think so. We'll see. Uh, we'll see. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. We'll see you next time. I'll be my guest.